everyone, and welcome to SG Now. I'm Gladys. Hi everyone, I'm Nick. We've got more of the latest happenings from around Singapore for you. That's right, we've also got interesting occupations, hobbies, and people you might not know about. Nick, we all know that you've been acting in TV dramas, but you're also doing opera. Why opera? Chinese opera. <laughs> <laughs> I've loved Chinese opera since I was young because of my grandma. She taught me how to understand more about Teochew opera. To me, it's challenging, but it makes my life more colourful. Wow, it sounds like opera has been in your blood. <laughs> but it really is such a unique talent. Thank you. And speaking of unique talents, that is, I heard you dance as well. And not just any dance, but you do breaking. You spin on the floor like b-boys. Why breaking? <laughs> well, I really love breaking because it's expressive, it's full of energy. But you know what? I know a group of very, very special ladies who can do a different kind of dance. Wow, what kind of dance? It's pole dancing. Wow, pole dancing. Our city Joe Kathleen will tell us more. Let's check it out. I am actually an advocate for self-love, so I'm really excited to be where I am today. We're actually outside the building where Slap Studio is. We're going to meet a bunch of beautiful ladies who will show me what self-love and body positivity means to them. Everyone has had a struggle at least once in their life and I'm really interested to see what they have to say. I may even join them for a little fun embracing our bodies. So let's go. I'm Phoebe. Hi, my name is Christy. My name is Jasmine Han. It means that I know how to be grateful of what I have with me that's been given to me. Believe it or not, I actually gave it a shot. It wasn't really that easy, but here's a little bit of me. It requires quite a bit of upper body and core strength. But it was fun nevertheless, I managed to do a firefighter spin. People actually take years to master it, so I'm quite proud of myself for going that far. How and why we got started with BIG, which stands for Beautiful Inspiring Girls, which is a great bunch of women who would like to have other women find normality and sound advice in their lives. So take for example, um, I'm a breast cancer survivor and when I was going through breast cancer, all I wanted to was talk to people who have young children who's going to go through a mastectomy and who's going to go through chemotherapy. And I didn't find a group that I can do that in. So we wanted a place where people could go to find support for what deems to be not normal in our society. We decided to get together a bunch of girls from with different backgrounds and different sizes and we decided to start an initiative. In various stages of my life, I think I, I struggled with different things. I, I was in a toxic relationship before. Um, I was in situations where I felt my self-esteem is low. Come back and try again and surround yourself with people who care for you. From the first day of doing pole and the me right now doing pole is totally different. The first day when I step into a class is like looking at everyone. You know, everyone's like so skinny and I'm the only one that's like so big size. It's like everyone's like staring at me feel very uncomfortable but now when I step in it's like hey I can do this you also can do this I would say that who is for everybody if you say that you do not want to go and don't feel like doing it there's no point of how much I persuade you to do it because once you set your mind of not doing it you reject yourself before I even invite you so I think that's the point that where you have to be comfortable in yourself. No matter what kind of body size you are, thin, fat or even curvier size, as long as you love your whole body, it will be good enough. 
We actually hope to have an environment where we can have a group of different diverse people come and inspire each other, regardless of uh, background or you know um, shape and sizes. Uh, a place where you can exchange ideas, and uh, hopefully we will bring in uh, different people who share stories or that are inspiring as well. So that's our goal, I guess. I've had an amazing time here at Slap Studio with the most welcoming ladies and I may just continue to learn from them. The lesson learned here is whatever it is, remember to always love yourself and remember you can do anything and everything if you set your mind to it. This has been City Joe Kathleen for Singapore One. Thank you for the inspiring story, Kathleen. That is, what do you think? Paul Dan Singh, no problem for you, right? No, 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 no. It's <laughs> much more difficult than it looks. You really need a lot of like physical strength, courage and skill. These ladies, they make it look easy. Yes, and it also takes a lot of love and passion. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you with Teochew Opera. So what else do you love? Well, aside from the usual things like travel and food, I really love my dog. His name is Chen. He's my best companion every day. I love dogs too. And I know someone who loves dogs so much that she's doing it every day as a job to encourage people to adopt dogs. Our City Joe Nicholas will tell you more. I must say, you know, a very big thank you to Joanna for actually letting me share your story with everyone else. And you know, I know her personally, I know her really, really well. She's one of the closest people I have in my life. Because of that, I'm, I'm actually letting you guys know how genuine and passionate she actually is. So, hi, my name is Joanna. I'm 21 years old. I had my first dog when I was seven. And she passed away, unfortunately, two years ago. And so she was about 13 years old. So when I got her, that is when my passion for dogs started. My dad really loves dogs. So I think I kind of took after him. And I actually started working at various pet industry centres. So from about 16 years old, I used to work here and I actually had to bathe and dry the dogs and the therapist in the pool would diagnose the dog's condition and provide recommendations accordingly. I met quite a lot of dogs which are blind, deaf or even paralysed from the waist down. And luckily, after three years working there, I was finally allowed into the pool and swam the dogs. Even though here doesn't give a very high pay, dealing with dogs was always a passion of mine and I enjoyed every second of it. So after I left working at the rehab centre, I started fostering as I saw a lot of posts online looking for fosterers at abused dogs and such. So that's when I took my first dog in, Bobby, which I rehabilitated as he had like food aggression. He was a pretty aggressive dog, but since I had the experience I've had for so many years, we slowly rehabilitated him and now he's with a family and he's really, really so healthy. And then after Bobby, I took in another dog called Bibi with a different shelter. So he was a pretty young dog, it was a stray dog. And he was pretty clueless. He didn't know how to live about a normal life as he's always roam free. So when I took him in, I taught him a few tricks here and there. Um, taught him how and where to go to the toilet. Like I have to bring him on a walk and such. How to walk even. And after that, thankfully, a couple came and took Baby in. And now Baby has officially been rehomed. So that has been my last dog that I fostered. And I really hope to foster more dogs. So in the future, if you ever want to get a dog, maybe you can always start with fostering, you know, helping these stray dogs, the dogs with no homes. You never know this dog could be a new member to your family. Fostering is not something I ever thought that I would be doing at this age, but I guess I gave it a shot because I saw a dog in need and then I decided to try fostering and see how it went and it was really a successful story and I hope that from this experience, my good experience, that you yourself would try giving fostering a shot as well. 
she really really loves pets to her core so um I really do hope, you know, for those who are watching this video, whether you're a pet lover or not, that you would take up her advice where, you know, if you were to ever one day consider taking care of, whether it's a cat or a dog, yeah, any kind of pet, that you would consider the strays first because they're the ones without a home, you know. And if you can actually show them any sign of love or affection, then it could really change their lives. And in doing so in the future, I'm pretty sure that they would change yours as well. If you have the love and the passion to take care of dogs and cats and animals in general, man, if you, if you have the love to give, um, please do so, all right? Wow, that's a lovely story, Gladys. Now I'm seriously considering adopting another dog. Why not do it? Hmm. I'm tempted to. <laughs> But it is so encouraging to see young people pursue their passions instead of just working for money. Yes, I agree. And I think it's a great thing when you love your job. Just like us, doing a meaningful show like this. Yes, <laughs> and it's always inspiring to see people pursuing their dreams no matter how long it takes, just like our next story. Yeah, our next story is about a man who turned his childhood passion into a profession as a master word carver. Let's follow Bruce and see how he did it. Don't waste your time. <laughs> it's a dying trade. You won't make money out of it. Wood carving Chinese deities like this has been a dying trade in Singapore for the past three decades. Competition from China and Taiwan have driven down the prices of these carvings so much that it has become difficult to make a living doing this trade. So imagine my surprise when I found out that there was one young man still doing it. His name is Alvin. And today I'm going to meet him to find out how he got himself into this craft. So what is it about wood carving that so interests you? I, I, I really am very curious. It's a living thing. But after it die, it dry off. There's no form. So when we carve, we give it the form. We give it the, a new life, you see. Since young, I passed by the temple and I like, get very fascinated about their, their stuff, all this. Uh. The accessory they are using, what is their, their, their costume, all this. The, the chairs, uh, the, the weapons, and everything. Okay. Yeah. Mm, so yeah. How, that's how that's when you... where I, I start to hands on and do my own miniature one. Uh, use the, using the knife, pen knife. Pen up and, and what? Chopstick. Uh. After his first chair carving out of chopsticks, Elvin went on to carve bigger and more complex shapes, and soon he was recruited to restore statues for the local temples. And this, how old is this case? 70 to 80 years. Yeah. Okay. And it was sent to you from a temple to do what? Yeah, restoration, no? to restore the, the, the lines, all this. So I'm really, really... Why, 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 do you, why do you cover their eyes? They are done already, they are waiting for, for the customer to come collect. Uh. Okay, then why, why do you need to cover the eyes for? They, they say that like, prevent those evil spirits to, for entering. Eh? Oh, is it? Uh -huh. Is it? Okay. But despite the significance of the work of wood carvers to religious organizations, there are only a few of them left in Singapore. Did you actively look for someone to apprentice under or you didn't look at all? Mm, last time I did, but they just tell me that don't waste your time. <laughs> it's a dying trade. You won't make, make money out of it. So that was 20 years ago? Yeah. You actually looked for someone and they rejected you? Mm -hmm. hmm. So when he rejected you, do you feel, mm. do you feel like disheartened? Mm, a bit lah. That's why that, that's the move, that's the motivation for me to go one, one thing to carry on this trip. Oh, okay. So instead of, okay, so when you were rejected, instead of being disheartened, it actually motivated you to want to do it better. Mm, yes. So you see guys, there are going to be many naysayers out there. But you know what? We do not let those guys pull us down. Go! Yeah. How many wood cover of deities are there in Singapore right now? Mm, I think there's just less than handful. Maybe less than five. Less than five? Mm. Two or three more. Mm, those that I know that they already closed down already. Oh. Why do you think they closed down? There's no more, no, so much demand now. Uh. Okay, not so much demand, but I, I, I still do see a lot of idols. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, I see people buying and all that. There's still a lot in shops. Well, they are direct import from China and Taiwan. 
most of it are mass produced. We are moving forward to technology and all this. So all this will be slowly you see? Yeah, because the demand is lower and you get cheaper products from overseas. Yeah. It's one of the possibilities because I mean I have looked at the workshop. It's filled with sawdust and everything. Mm -hmm. It's one of the possibilities because you know it's not a clean job. Yeah. It's a dusty, messy job. Now people, now youngsters, they want an aircon, office job. Yeah. Wet eye. Yeah. <laughs> I want to find out personally what it is like to do wood carving. And I'm going to join Elvin today to try to carve out the details of a chair. Okay, honestly guys, it may look easy, but I'm telling you, I'm sweating already, see? Oh my gosh, I got, I got dust inside my nostril, I got dust going inside my eyes, okay? I'm starting to tear, I'm starting to perspire. I hope I don't see. <coughs> okay, okay, time out, time out, time out, I give up, surrender. <laughs> what do you think can be done to preserve your tree? Nothing much we can do, lah. actually, just like, Maybe for, for me, I go go for technology to make it faster, make it more worth it. Yeah, make it more affordable for the for the general people using. Uh, it's sad lah, but we don't have a choice lah. We have to move on. What is the future like for wooden carved Chinese deities? Will they be mass produced by factories or lovingly handcrafted? I guess only time will tell. This is Bruce for Singapore One. Wow, that's so amazing. Wood carving is such a colourful and unique profession. And we hardly see it in Singapore nowadays. Yes, I've always admired people with unique skills and talents. It's so different, but very meaningful. That's true. I also admire people who are creative. They add spices to your life. Speaking of spices, Gladys, do you cook? I do. I love cooking. I especially love to cook Chinese, Korean, and Japanese cuisines at home. Wow, I'm feeling hungry. When do I get to try your cooking? Can you bring some food to the studio? Um, I'll think about it. <laughs> what about you? Do you cook? Of course I can cook. I can cook food like fried rice, fried egg, porridge, instant noodles. Um, that's it. Uh, many different types of instant noodles. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. We'll go to a restaurant instead. Talking about restaurants, I know a chef who will serve you restaurant quality food at your home. Really? You mean like some sort of private dining at home? Yes, our city Joe Leo paid Chef David at Cloud9 Private Dining a visit and got a taste of his delicious offerings. You're making me hungry. <laughs> Let's check it out. From Instagram food business to a private dining space. How easy or difficult is it for an entrepreneur to set up business nowadays? Join me for a trip to Cloud9. I asked Chef David Lowe and his partner Pei Yi Wu on how Cloud9 private dining started. So David came back from US as well as the Hong Kong in 2018, thereabouts. Yeah, he really wanted to start his own place because there was so much experience that was gathered from overseas. Then when we finally decided maybe we will just go ahead and you know perhaps even really start a restaurant, then I think COVID started. So we held back and said instead of you know starting a restaurant, perhaps we should just uh, cook from home. I wonder whether it's easy to set up a home business. It's not easy. It's yeah. not easy. Very difficult. You're trying to do, do a professional work in a, in a home setting, so naturally, it's still home. Yeah. We needed three fridges, so we made a cautious decision to have three of them at home. So we had to make space for that. The second thing was most of the uh, suppliers will not give us supplies of below uh, 1,000 for different kinds of boxes. It's harder to order mm. because they all come in bulk. Mm. Yeah. So if you want to, if for example our clay pot rice is about this size, our kaya is this size, so we have two kinds of items of a thousand each sitting in the house. So whenever we have friends who want to come over to eat, right, then we have to shift everything into the room and close the door. Yeah. 
but all is well as Chef David and P found a great space and I'm just about to try their special six course menu. I'm having the roasted pumpkin soup. Very interesting pumpkin soup. It has a Chinese wine and it could mix with the cream and the pine nuts. And I also like how beautiful it's been presented. I'm beginning to like this private dining concept, but how does it work? Yeah, so, so how it works is uh, you make a booking with us, uh, get your confirmation on your dates, timing, and then you tell us your food allergies and preferences. Then we will craft a menu around it. Uh, if you don't know what you want already, we have suggested menus, so you can go from there. Uh, it's very seasonal, yeah, so we choose the best ingredients that our suppliers have. Uh, I think David is good in seafood and beef. I listened to recommendations, so here I am with Chef looking for the lobster. This is called the Grilled Western Rock Lobster with Eggplant Puree. I love the char grill taste. The meat is fresh and I like how compact it is. It tastes really good. Here's another specialty. Wagyu strip loin with black garlic sauce. Roasted barley risotto is a good supplement to the pan seared steak because it adds more texture to it. It's more crunchy and then there is a little bit of a cream flavor. I always look forward to dessert. Here's pavlova, mango, coconut milk, passion fruit, and peach. Look at this multi level dessert, which I'm just about to enjoy. How you eat this? You have the sweet and sour taste because of the mango, the passion fruit, the peach, and the coconut cream, and the sweetness of the meringue on the other side. So, very good balance. If you want an elegant, intimate dining experience, Cloud9 is the way to go. The portions are generous, the food is sumptuous, the ambience is great. After that experience, I have a much greater appreciation of how much work is put into preparing the food that's served on the table. My heart is not the only thing that's full here, my tummy as well. This is City Joe Leo with Singapore One. Wow, that's so lovely. Gladys, I actually tried a similar home private dining before, but they served traditional Nyonya food. Ooh, how was the experience? Was the food good? Yes, of course. It's so, so delicious. And the person serving us the food actually wore Peranakan costumes. It made me feel like home. Wow, I would love to try homemade Peranakan food. Gladys, actually, I can try cooking Nyonya food for you. You mean Peranakan instant noodles? Uh... I'm not so sure if I want to try that. Okay, I'll bring you to the fine dining one day. Okay, we will talk about it one day. <laughs> Thank you for watching SG Now. We'll see you in our next episode. Bye. Thank you. Bye.